Hi guys, my name is Tensor. So welcome to my Rust tutorial videos. These are going to be essentially videos that teach you how to code in Rust. We're going to make a lot of programs, mostly just toy programs, nothing that's really a uh, workable project. Those types of videos will come after I'm finished with these. So let's get started. Why should you care about Rust? Well, Rust is a very low level programming language, so a systems level programming language like C++ or C, and it focuses on safety, speed, and concurrency. And it has a design that lets you create programs that have pretty high performance I'd say on the level of C++ performance, but you also gain a huge level of control and you have the power of some of the higher level language abstractions that you don't get in other low level languages like C++ and C. Also Rust doesn't have garbage collection and instead it uses something called ownership, which we will kind of get into uh, in a later video. To install Rust on your computer, just go to rust-lang.org and you see here you have this big old install Rust button here and you click it and right here you can install the Rust Up program. Rust Up is a tool that allows you to manage multiple versions of Rust on your computer. You can have the stable build as well as the development build. All three of the builds installed on your computer at once without having any real issues. And this is fairly nice. I, I would actually recommend if, if you're going to get Rust to get Rust up, especially if you're on Windows. With Rust up, you get the Rust compiler, which is called Rust C. And you also gain access to the Rust package manager, which is called Cargo. All right, so let's take a look at Rust up in Cargo. So if I type Rust up here, it'll bring up the different commands that we can do. Uh, we have various different commands here. Um, we can look at the various tool chains that I have installed on my machine. We're going to set up like a little playground project. So to do this, we need to use the cargo tool. And if I type in cargo here, you'll see here that a bunch of cargo commands will pop up. All right, so I'm gonna type in cargo new, and we're gonna call this playground. And notice I'm writing this in snake case. So play underscore ground. That's just an idiomatic rest thing. You could use camel case or any other case, but I'd be careful because some of the features of rest rely on capitals and stuff like that. Then I'm gonna put in this dash dash bin, and this basically will just tell the compiler to build a binary application. So you can see here that after hitting enter, it says here created binary application playground project. And if I CD in the playground, we are now inside the folder. I can show you what the folder looks like. You can see here that we have a source folder. We have this cargo tomo file, and then we have our dot git ignore file as well. Cargo tomo file is our package file, and I'll, I'll take we'll take a look at that here in a moment. And then inside of this source directory is where all of our Rust files reside. All right, so I've opened this up in VS Code, and here is the cargo tomo file. As you can see here, we have the package name and the version, and then the authors. You can also put in a description and some various other meta flags. Then we have this dependencies uh, area, and in here you can put in all the dependencies you want. So for instance, say I wanted the random library. So this is for generating random numbers and stuff. I could type in rand equals and then star. I don't need a semicolon. And this will get the latest version of the library. Uh, we'll, we'll go into more detail about that later when we actually do need some packages. But for now, we don't really need any, and we're just going to be mainly using the standard library of Rust. If you look up here, here's the source directory, and inside of it we have this main.rs file. Inside of that we have this function main, which has this println bang hello world. So this is a macro here that allows us to print out to the console, as well as create a new line. And as expected, it takes in the string here, hello world, and it will print it out to the console when we run this. And of course we can change this string as much as we want. Say I want to say tensor instead of world. And then we'll add something like, hey, hello tensor, I like Rust. So I can jump back into my uh, command prompt here and run cargo run. This will compile everything and then run it. And you can see here it says, hello tensor, I like Rust, as expected. 
All right, so let's kind of break this down a little bit. I know it's a fairly simple program. Uh, you can see here that we have this FN. So this is a macro to create a new function. And then of course we have a main function. So that's the name of the function. This is our entry point for our Rust program. So all Rust programs are going to have a main function if they are runnable programs. So if this was a library, and not a binary, then it wouldn't have a main function necessarily. And that's actually why we put in the bin flag in cargo, because we wanted it to generate a main uh, function as well as make our file called main.rs. So Rust has variables, so I can say let x equals 5. You always want to have semicolons after uh, most statements. There are some uh, exceptions to this and we'll get into those later. So here I'm binding x to 5. Something to note is that variables in Rust are immutable by default and you can see here it's throwing us an error because I'm trying to reassign x to 5 again. But uh, let's say uh, x equals 6. You can see here it cannot assign twice to immutable variable x. We can make variables mutable however by putting in a keyword here. So instead of just saying let x equal 5, we can say let mute x equal 5. And this will make a mutable variable. So now we can say x equals 10. And this will not throw back an error. So Rust has basic type inference. So you can see here it's inferring the type based on the uh, actual assigned value. But we can also um, put the type that we want here as well. So say we want this to be a u32 then now this number will be a U32. Now this is kind of important for how Rust deals with memory, and this is something that we'll get a little bit further into later. Now before we close out this tutorial, let's talk about the primitives in Rust. So for integers, we have two main types of integers. We have signed and unsigned integers, and they're all broken up into various different types. You can see here we have I8, U8, I16, U16, I, this should say 32, use 32, and 64, 64. Now this is based on the amount of bytes that the actual number is taking up in memory. I8s are 8-bit, I16s are 16-bit, and so on and so forth. We also have what are called size numbers. So we have I size and U size. The actual memory size of these will be based on the computer that you're actually running this on. So if we're in a 64-bit architecture computer like we're running here, this will default to 64 bits. But if you're on a 32-bit architecture computer, it'll default to 32 bits. We also have two float types. So we have F32 and F64. So 32-bit floats and 64-bit floats. We use the 64-bit float for double precision and the 32 for single precision. So we also have basic math inside of Rust. You can see here we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We also have the remainder operator. So this is uh, 49 mod two. We also have a bool type in Rust, so this is just denoted with bool, and it's either true or false. And we also have character types. So a character is denoted with a single quote like this. So we can say let C equal, and you can see here, C with single quotes. So this is a character, and we can even say let C and then car equal Z, and that's a character. Let me delete this C here. So characters are ASCII's. So you can put um, anything from Chinese, Japanese, Korean, emojis, just basically any character into uh, Rust and use it as a character. We also have tuples in Rust. You can see here, uh, this is actually a collection of data. So I'm saying here, I want an I32, a float 64, and a character in here. So let's see. I'll write, uh, say, 42, and then 6.12, and then, I guess, J. And this is a tuple. So tuples are collections of data. They don't necessarily need to be the same type, and you can essentially make them as long as you want. They're pretty useful for various things. Like, for instance, we can do what's called destructuring with them. So if I say, uh, let's say x, y, and z 
equal t, what this will do is it will pattern match against t, which is this tuple here, and it will assign z to 42, y to 6.12, and x to j. And we can even say we just wanted uh, x here. We could put in some underscores here, and it will ignore these two values here and just give us the j here with x. And so this destructures the, uh, the tuple into a uh, single value here, as you can see, or multiple values, depending on what you need. You can also quickly access numbers in tuples by using uh, the tuple name and then dot the index. So for instance, 2.0 would give us 42. Then t.1 would give us 6.12. And then t.3 would give us j. And these are throwing an error just simply because they're not part of an expression. Finally, the last basic type is arrays. So arrays are lists of one type. So either they're integers or characters or floats or booleans or you know whatever but they only have one single type but they're large lists so we create an array by saying let a equal and then we use square brackets and say we want an array from one to eight so this is our array now to access arrays say we want to access our array here we could access it you got to remember that arrays in Rust are zero indexed, which means that the zero index of A will give us one, the first index will give us two, the second will give us three, and so on and so forth. So arrays are useful when you want your data allocated on the stack rather than the heap, or when you want to ensure you always have a fixed number of elements. So they're not very flexible, like for instance, the vector type, which we'll talk about later. The vector type is a similar collection type, and it's sort of part of the standard library, and it can grow and shrink in size, but vec uh, arrays can't. Like once you've defined an array, the length stays the same, even if it's a mutable array in Rust. Alright guys, so that's enough for now. If you've enjoyed this new format, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to you know leave a comment in the comments section. And of course, if you disliked it, then go ahead and downvote it as much as you want. I've also added uh, two cryptocurrency addresses to the comment box. If you want to donate to uh, help create more content, then by all means, you can do so this way. I hope you guys have a good night.